Hey guys, and welcome back to Catching Up with Cameron. I'm your host, Cameron Mitchell, and we all just watched the 2020 NBA draft, so let's talk the top 10 picks. So the Minnesota Timberwolves had the number one pick of this year's draft, and they picked up guard from Georgia, Anthony Edwards. Analysts went back and forth on who was going to get this first, uh, this number one pick this year. Um, but given that the Timberwolves already have D'Angelo Russell and Carl Anthony Towns, I think that Anthony Edwards was the most practical pick for them. He is a very talented dude. He is able to drive towards the rim, and defenders tend to actually just kind of bounce off of him. He has a unique size mixed with his agility that makes him a very unique player for the Timberwolves to have picked up. He's more of a reactor than he is a creator, and on top of that he's pretty sloppy when it comes to defense and there have been a lot of questions about whether or not his passion really is in the game but I think once he's led by these guys like Towns and Russell he will hopefully be able to light that passion more and we'll see him be really successful with the team this year. So pick number two was going to be one of the more interesting picks of this draft for me. Um, the Golden State Warriors had this pick and to just start off the draft day was one of the worst days for the Golden State Warriors. Um, they found out that Klay Thompson was injured again, and we've now found out that he has a torn Achilles, so he will not be playing this season. Um, I was impressed though, the Warriors did not seem to react uh, to the news. Instead, they went with their gut, they stuck to their plan, and they picked up the center from Memphis, James Wiseman. Now, James Wiseman has an incredible frame that makes him a very talented shot blocker and an excellent rebounder. Um, he doesn't have necessarily the best range, but I think next to guys like Steph Curry and Draymond Green, we're gonna see a lot of explosion on the court. Uh, these three are gonna be a very, very powerful team together. And um, I, he's got great instincts, he's got quick things and I, I see him being a very immediate positive impact for this team. There's no doubt in my mind that the Warriors are going to make it to the playoffs this year. It's just can James Wiseman make them that championship contender team that we've always seen them um, as up until like kind of this past season. So with pick number three, the Charlotte Hornets ended up taking LaMelo Ball. Uh, analysts went back and forth, and I even went back and forth on whether or not he was going to be the number one pick. And I think if it weren't for the fact that he were a point guard, he probably would have gotten picked up by the Timberwolves. But given that they were already okay on that position, I think it makes sense that LaMelo fell to number three. But there is no denying that this kid is very skilled. He has this creativity, but also this quickness that makes him deliver these almost impossible passes. And with such consistency, he's a fantastic fantastic ball handler. He really knows how to just get to the rim and make these shots. I think Ball has the potential to be one of the greatest playmakers in the league just because of that creativity. He's just got to strengthen up on defense, but I'm excited to see him next to guys like Devontae Graham and PJ Washington this coming season. The Chicago Bulls had the fourth pick of this year's draft, and they made a surprising call in my eyes. They drafted Patrick Williams, the small forward from Florida State. Um, I definitely expected them to pick up a small forward, but given that guys like Isaac Okoro and Denny Avdija were still on the market, I didn't really understand why they went with Patrick Williams. There's no doubt he's a talented scorer. He's very efficient when it comes to getting to the rim and just making those baskets, and he's really, really good at passing off of a dribble but he has these sort of clunky movements that lead him to get burned a lot on defense. And on top of that, he had 50 turnovers while he was in college and often got called out for traveling. So if he's missing these sort of fundamentals, I don't really see him having that sort of immediate impact that would have been helpful for a team like the Bulls. I think after some time and some training, we'll see Williams sort of step up the way we need him to, but I don't think it's gonna be right off the bat. And I don't think that this was necessarily Chicago's best move. With pick number five, the Cleveland Cavaliers selected the small forward from Auburn, Isaac Okoro, who I previously mentioned. Um, I did project that Okoro would go to the Cavaliers, but again, that was with Denny Avdija getting picked up at number four. So the fact that Isaac Okoro got picked up above Denny does surprise me, but Isaac Okoro is a fantastic defender. He literally does not let people get through him. He takes on some of the biggest guys and has really, really great instincts. He's not the most talented shooter, um, and in general, he kind of lacks that quickness and agility that he needs to get to the rim and just score these baskets um, through defenders, but but I do think that he is going to be a valuable asset. And like I said, had Avdija gotten picked up, I definitely would have put Okoro's next best small forward for a team to pick up. But I do think that this season we're going to see a lot of good plays from Okoro and he's going to be an asset to guys like Andre Drummond and Kevin Love who are already on the team. So I'm not upset with the Cavaliers for this choice. I just still think and wonder why Avdija wasn't at the top of their list. Okay, with pick number six, the Atlanta Hawks chose to draft uh, 
Onyeka Okungwu, the center from USC. Now, a lot of analysts have been very skeptical as to why Atlanta chose to make this decision because they just recently acquired Clint Capella from the Rockets and they already have John Collins. But this is exactly what I expected Atlanta to do and exactly what I thought they should do because Okungwu brings a unique set of skills that Capella and Collins don't. Uh, first off, he's a fantastic pick and roll defender. Then on top of that, he can catch these crazy passes and also give off incredibly slick ones. He's very quick. He's a very quick thinker and a good decision maker. And he's able to make these quick leaps for some of the toughest shots. Um, his biggest issue is that he's just a little bit quiet and he's kind of small for a center. So he's going to need to buff up so he can take up, take on some of these other big guys in the league. But I think that Atlanta is on to something. And I think that alongside Trey Young, Clint Capella, Cam Reddish, this is going to be a very, very powerful team within Atlanta that we're not necessarily used to seeing. With the seventh pick, the Detroit Pistons chose to draft the point guard from France, Killian Hayes. I liked this pick a lot. Given that Detroit is likely in the midst of a kind of rebuild, it makes sense to acquire a guy like Killian Hayes so that way you have this sort of strong, young foundation for once these veteran players leave. He's a very creative pick and roll ball handler, and on top of that, he has a unique build that I think is going to provide a lot of versatility for him while he plays defense. His biggest problem is that he's left-handed. So he does have this very unique passing ability, but a lot of times the fact that he can't use that right hand doesn't allow him to pass as accurately as he needs to. And I think that if he can find a way to sort of strengthen up this right hand and use it just a little bit more, he's gonna have a lot more success on this in this professional league. But I still think that Detroit got a really good pick in Killian Hayes, and I'm excited to see what he does for the team when he does finally start playing. Okay, now pick number eight, another very interesting pick for me, uh, the New York Knicks. I knew I had no idea what they were going to do because obviously the Knicks have a lot of work that needs to take place in order for them to be a better team. Um, and the one thing I will say is I'm very disappointed that I did not have this kid in my top ten, Obi Toppin. He is a power forward from Dayton and he is just quite the athlete. Toppin is able to land the most incredible dunks. He is fantastic at attacking on the perimeter. He's good from three. Even though Toppin doesn't necessarily seem to play with the best awareness and oftentimes we notice that he's kind of in the wrong place um, and he's not where he should be, um, I do still think that he's going to be a very impactful player for the Knicks and I think as soon as he steps into Madison Square Garden people are not going to forget his name because he is just that kind of player and I think he's going to transition to the NBA incredibly well. And finally, with pick number nine, the Washington Wizards drafted the small forward from Tel Aviv, Denny Avdija. Now, I have been talking about him because I do not understand how he dropped this low in the draft. The Washington Wizards must have been so pleasantly surprised. They got an absolute steal. Avdija is a very unique sort of player. He doesn't tend to make a lot of mistakes. Yeah, he is not necessarily the best shooter. He can't necessarily catch the ball and just immediately release it. He always has to kind of fidget with the ball before he can shoot. Um, and he's not the best at containing quicker players. But when it comes to locating cutters and shooters, Avdija's your guy. On top of that, he has excellent scoring abilities when it comes to going towards the rim. He literally does not care about rim protectors. He is going and nine times out of ten he is going to make that shot. He will push you out of the way and he will make the basket. He has fantastic playmaking abilities and his height and his agility definitely make definitely strengthen these abilities. And I think like I said that the Wizards got very very lucky in being able to acquire such a talented guy with a decently late pick. And finally, pick number 10, Phoenix Suns. Okay, now we've seen the Suns do some questionable things in the past, but this takes the cake. I, th this is still the most confusing pick of this entire draft for me because they took the center from Maryland, Jalen Smith. Smith was not projected to go anywhere in the top 10 and definitely not on a team that already has a very powerful center in DeAndre Ayton. So we just saw the Suns come off this fantastic run in the NBA bubble. They just acquired Chris Paul, which is going to be, a, he's going to be a valuable asset alongside Devin Booker. So why exactly did they go for a guy like Jalen Smith? I mean, there's no denying Smith is a talented shooter. He is a talented shot, shot blocker and he's able to beat defenses for dunks and layups but pretty slow to defend at the rim. He's not exactly the best passer, so I think that he has a lot of work that needs to be done before he has any chance of being very successful on the pro professional level. And, and so I'm very confused by this pick, just not what I would have done as Phoenix with my number 10 pick. Well guys, those are my thoughts on the top 10 picks. I'd be curious to know what, who was your favorite of the top 10 picks or the draft uh, as a whole. So make sure to leave those comments below, like this video and follow my page for more content. And as always, thank you for catching up with Cameron. <laughs>